Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Digital Arts Show. I'm Jim Suriani, your host. Thank you so much for joining us today. This show is part of the Digital Arts Festival that is produced by Center Stage Theater of Santa Barbara, California. The Digital Arts Festival shows stream nightly at 7 p.m. And you can find out more on the Center Stage website, centerstagetheater.org. And just click on the blog tab there, right on the homepage. Again, that's centerstagetheater.org. Click on the blog tab. The purpose of the Digital Arts Festival is to create an outlet for artists of all kinds to share their work. Um, because of the shutdown and quarantine, many artists and performers suddenly found themselves with no way to show their work or to perform. And unfortunately, in some cases, the work these artists have created may never be seen by the public, which would be so very unfortunate. But in an effort to find some sort of workaround, if you will, the Digital Arts Festival was created to help artists and performers connect with their audiences in a virtual setting. So we will have dance, theater, music, film, visual arts, poetry, storytelling, and much more. And again you, again, you can learn all about it on the Center Stage website, centerstagetheater.org, and click on the blog tab and you can see who's up for today and all the past interviews that we've done so far. Uh, today's guest is Lark Bateau. Lark has performed internationally, nationally, and locally with Theater of Process Theater, Ensemble Theater, and Valerie Houston Dance Theater. Currently, she plays guitar and sings with her French cabaret troupe, Bohemian Dreams. She's also an award-winning poet, and she's written a memoir called Paris Mishaps, and is now writing a coming-of-age memoir, and we are very excited to learn more about her career and everything that she's up to. And uh, welcome to the show, Lark Bateau. It's so great to have you today. Thank you, it's great to be here. And um, so let me just, uh, right off the bat, let me ask you, um, tell us a little bit about your creative and artistic background and process. What is the path that brought you to where you are today? Wow, that's a quite a circuitous path. <laughs> <laughs> Probably it is for most people. But um, when I was growing up, I was trained classically in music and dance and some theater. And then uh, when I became a teenager, I started not wanting to do ballet anymore and not play the violin anymore. And um, left the country <laughs> and uh, ended up living in a community in the north of Scotland called Findhorn, spiritual community. And uh, that was when I believe my real creative spark began because in that very small community of people, there's like, you know, maybe 20 people during the winter, 80 during the summer, I started uh, writing music. I was playing my guitar and started writing songs. I also started a little dance class in the community center and we all rolled up our jeans and leaped about. And then we ended up starting making uh, creative dances for festivals throughout the year in, the, in our sanctuary, which is where we would go to sit and, and be quiet. And uh, started working with a whole group called uh, the New Troubadours. We had a little troupe and we'd perform. And that's, I would say, where my creative life really began. Um, um, after that, I was, because I wasn't wanting to do ballet anymore, but I felt like I was still a performer, uh, kind of born ham bone. <laughs> and, and so I uh, started working in theater instead when I moved to Santa Barbara to work with a theater company called Process Theater in the 70s. And then Valerie Houston got a hold of me and insisted that I perform with them too. So I was doing both. Nice. But after that, um, I began creating my own shows. And, uh, and it continued throughout the 80s, creating my own theater and dance, music and art. And um, kind of the peak of that would be at the, about 1987, I created a show called Orpheus and Eurydice. And it was a dance theater piece, totally original. Eight actors and dancers and um, we did that actually at the dance warehouse I don't think center stage existed at that point yeah. but um, <clears throat> very exciting very fun uh, very tumultuous of course as all arts are <laughs> but you can't help yourself if you're an artist you just have to do it 
Exactly, you do. And um, uh, by the way, uh, my guest today is Lark Bateau. And if you'd like to uh, learn more about her, if you'd like to send her an email, you can certainly do that. Um, her email is larkbateau at gmail.com. That's L-A-R-K-B-A-T-T-E-A-U at gmail.com. And you can send her an email if you'd like to learn more about what she's up to. So Lark, uh, let me ask you then, you, you have a very eclectic artistic background as an actor, yes. dancer, musician, yeah. and writer. Uh, yeah. How does yeah. your personal creative process differ in those different fields? <laughs> well, when I'm creating a theater piece, of course, everything gets thrown in there because I'm writing it and I'm directing it and I'm performing in it and I'm, and I'm also doing all the publicity. So it's a very full on experience, which is wonderful. But I would say in the last 10 years or so, maybe more, I've, I've been more doing one part of, of what I love to do rather than everything at once. And um, it's a little bit more manageable. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I won't die young. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, um, but I, I do love it. I, I kind of narrowed it down most recently in the last six years. I've just been playing my guitar and singing French cabaret songs with a wonderful guy named Gregory, and we perform around town. And it's just us at this point. And occasionally we have special guests. It's very theatrical. It's lots of fun and very low tech and I don't have to rent <laughs> rehearsal space. I just make him dinner and we rehearse in the living room, you know? Nice, nice, but, very um, cool. But, uh, but at the moment, really my big push creatively is to write this memoir at, about Finhorn, about that place I lived in the north of Scotland when I was young. I got there at age 19, was there three years, it was a massively creative time. And I felt, um, I don't know if other artists have this, but there are these, these um, it's not really an obsession. It's more like a command from my depths of my psyche that says, you need to do this. And so I need to do this. I need to write this memoir. So that's my main focus right now. And I just play music actually because of course there's no venues to go perform in right now. I sing on the front porch <laughs> for my oh, neighborhood. Nice. Yeah, I light some candles, get out my guitar. They hear me catawalling away, try <laughs> a couple new tunes. That's great. Oh, that's yeah. that's a wonderful way to you know to still be creative. Yeah. Um, and it's such a weird time that we're we're in right now. Wow. Um, and again, my uh, guest today is Lark Bateau, and uh, she is a performer here in the Santa Barbara area and has performed. Uh, nationally and internationally. <clears throat> uh, Lark, some of your pursuits are uh, very collaborative in nature and some are more of a solo pursuit, it sounds like. Uh, does that difference impact your creative process? Well, I'm a very social person, so writing a book is, is very challenging for me because it is mostly solitary. So I have um, a friend of mine who actually used to be my boss. I wrote dance reviews for The Independent for a few years and uh, his name's DJ Palatino. So we meet once a week and he reads my chapters and we talk about, we talk shop, you know? Uh -huh. And then I have a friend up who moved to Eugene from here and she's written a novel and she's in the middle of another one. So even though it's a really solitary occupation, I personally need to connect with others to write this. I need to share my stories, have them read it, what works, what, what doesn't work. Um, it's very challenging. I've never done this before. So this is probably the most challenging creative thing I've ever done. Um, but I do, I do need uh, friends and colleagues to, to talk to and to uh, commiserate, <laughs> of course. Sure. You know, it's like, you should see my desk, it's total chaos, you know, and my, my outline is stuck on the wall right behind the computer here, and it's scribbled all over, and, and, uh, wow. and yet, I'm very excited about it, and, and this is what I know to be true, which may be a little different for some people, is that when you're on your path, whether it's creative or spiritual, um, miracles happen uh, if you're really committed. Um, that Robert Bly expression, follow your bliss, is much deeper than just sort of an hedonistic kind of follow your bliss. It really is 
really knowing what your creative spark is. And when you are really committed and it really is there for you and you're following it with all your heart, doors will open where, where you would not have thought there were doors and the universe steps in and helps. So about a month ago, uh, a new friend who had also lived at Finhorn said, I want you to meet my friend Bill, who is an agent for books like yours. And I have an agent now. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> I know, That's I didn't even cool. go to a conference and pitch or anything about that. <laughs> 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 but yeah, but you're, I think you're so right. I, I, I hear that all the time. It's like, you know, if you, you know, if you think it, if you have positive thoughts and positive things will come to you. Yeah. And I, and I, I think that's very, very much true. And again, um, we're talking with, or I'm talking with <laughs> here on the Digital Arts Festival, I'm talking with uh, Lark Beto, and um, she is our guest today on the Digital Arts Festival. Um, speaking of the festival, Lark, uh, for the Digital Arts Festival, you are I understand you're sharing a video of the show you did back in 2000. Can you tell us about that show and, and how it came to be? Oh, that was great. Um, it was another one of those moments, like I spoke of earlier, about how it's this command from the psyche that you must do this. And um, I had been in a Tibetan Buddhist retreat. I was a very devoted student of Tibetan Buddhism for 10 years. And I was in a retreat. And you get lots of thoughts, and you just let them go, you know. But I had a vision. I had this powerful vision of doing a production, dance theater production, telling the life of Buddha from birth to enlightenment. That just sounds nuts, right? <laughs> but, you know, I'm never one to shy away from something that interesting. So I pulled up a few friends, called a few friends, some people that I worked with before when I did a show in 1987. And a lot of them came back and would work with me. And we started working the story. And it became Shakyamuni, The Life of Buddha, and um, a cast of seven. And we played multiple roles. I get to be the mother that gives birth and dies. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, <Yes, Dean. laughs> right? And, uh, and it was a... Uh, an incredible process and I would say the the actors and dancers who were working with me were extraordinary in their commitment and their trust and their willingness to give everything they had because of course I couldn't have done it without them um, but I did discover that they liked that I was where the buck stopped it was like they liked that I was in charge and um, so they gave me permission to be in charge and I let them know I couldn't do it without them. So that's really what a collaboration is. Yes. And I love, I loved that. It was amazing. And, and of course, everybody brings their particular style to the creation, their particular point of view to the creation, their particular, so they have kind of, everybody has a unique energy, you know, and if you can, you know what that is, and you can place those actors and dancers in certain roles where that will really shine, right? Right. Wow, amazing. Yeah, that has to be very amazing. Wow, that's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, tell me then, in this, um, you know, with the pandemic, how have you been impacted by the stay-at-home order in terms of your creativity and artistic process? <laughs> Well, writing a book is perfect, right? <laughs> right, yeah. If you, yeah, if you have to be at home, and <laughs> Maybe, you might as well write a book. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, my income, though, you know, I, um, to make a, I make a living as a holistic health practitioner. So I'm unable to teach yoga and give massages and work with private clients. So um, that really impacted me that way. But creatively, I don't think it's limited me at all. In fact, I find that when there are constraints, I'm usually more creative. Um, I think a lot of people don't always know that. They think that to be creative, you have to have everything and be able to do anything you want and always and everywhere and anything. And I find that when I'm really constrained, wow, it just, it takes all that energy and it's like a laser point. It just brings it in and gives it so much power. Um, for example, I taught circus camp for, for five years, <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> favorite job ever. <laughs> that must have been a lot, lot of fun. The, a lot of the boys, the little boys, they were like eight to 12, were pretty ADD, <laughs> you know? Oh, wow. 
And man, I fell in love with them because they have such creativity. They're all over the place. But if you can corral them, if you can give them a purpose to focus that energy, that wild energy they have, they are spectacular on stage. And so they get to really have a positive experience of who they are. And, um, you know, I just love that. So nice. That's my theory. That's <laughs> I really think cool. I was probably ADD, probably am a little still now. <laughs> you think? I think all of us were who, those of us who've done theater or, you know, dance yeah. or any kind of, yeah. you know, performing arts of any kind. I think there yeah. may have been. <laughs> A little yeah. dash of ADD, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> Just a dash. <laughs> Just a dash here and there, <laughs> or more. <laughs> I know. Hence the book is practiced. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And again, um, my guest today is Lark Bateau. And if you'd like to uh, find out more about what she does, you can certainly email her. And her email is larkbateau at gmail.com. That's L A R K B A T T E A U at gmail.com and you can certainly send her an email to uh, ask her about what she's up to and uh, what she has going on. So uh, Lark, how do you think this crisis and experience will impact your creative process going forward once we come out of the quarantine? Well, um, <clears throat> before the quarantine happened, I actually had planned to do some readings from the book. Uh -huh. And um, I have already done some. I did uh, reading last year and um, this last summer, I actually went to Finhorn in Scotland and did a reading there. And um, as I said, I was doing music a lot at Finhorn. And, and so a lot of the songs that I wrote and co-wrote at that time are really sort of beloved songs of the community. So, so what I did was I would read a chapter and then I'd sing a song with my guitar. And then I'd read a chapter and sing a song from Finhorn with my guitar, Finhorn songs. And it was really fun and I loved it. And because I'm a performer, okay, it's just, you know, I just get bigger and louder and more fun. And I was, I'm really looking forward to doing more of that. I want to hold readings and I'm looking forward to traveling with it. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I wish we could talk more about your work and everything you've done, but unfortunately we're just about out of time. Wow. Uh, but Likewise. before... Before we go, I just want to uh, let everybody know one more time that um, if they want to email Lark, you can email her at larkbateau at gmail.com. That's L-A-R-K-B-A-T-T-E-A-U at gmail.com. And to find out more about what she's up to. And if you'd like to learn more about Center Stage Theater, you can certainly do so at their website, centerstagetheater.org. And on the homepage there at centerstagetheater.org, you can click on the blog tab and that'll take you to the digital arts festival blog page and you can learn all about the artists that we've been featuring uh throughout this entire time and again that's centerstagetheater.org and just click on the blog tab and uh, to learn more about the digital arts festival and if you want to know what i'm up to you can find me all over the place on social media at jim on the air on facebook and jim on the air on instagram as well and Lark, I just want to thank you so much for joining us today and taking time out of your day to be with us and continued success with your career. Well, thank you so much, Jim. It's been a pleasure. It's, it, it, and it has been a pleasure for me as well. Thank you for, for being with us. Yeah. And thank you to everybody for watching at home. And we'll see you next time. See you next Bye time. Bye for now. Ciao. Bye. Bye.